In 363 AD, priests from Koinobi, Egypt, released 42 mystery books, and one, released unofficially, the 43rd, was the most jealously guarded, for it contained the teachings of their most prominent initiate, Jehoshua ben Nazaria, entitled Magia Jesu Christi. The other 36 of these books from the Koinobi priesthood predate the Great Flood, and six contain the knowledge of Hermes called the Hermetic Wisdom, books that formed the future steps, sigils, symbols, and myths of the Koinobi priesthood of Egypt, which established the secret Freemasonry knowledge. As you will come to see, all of this secret knowledge has been guarded by the Freemasons and the Vatican today as jealously as the priesthoods that Jehoshua so famously rebuked, but not just the Judean priesthoods, also the Egyptian and Greek priesthoods of his day. Jehoshua not only bested them all in his mastery of the secret knowledge, but is their greatest rebel to date. He desired to lift the veil of their secrecy and make the secret priesthood knowledge public only for the Freemason Brotherhood to collect and cloak in secrecy once again, like the new priesthood of today. The following is the secret knowledge Jehoshua desired to reveal, the foundation of the Masonry Framework, and the jealously guarded truths the Catholic Vatican does not want you to know. The man we call Jesus Christ, according to the Jewish version of his birth, recorded in the Sefer Todos Jeshu, in the following words, was born to Mary, having become the mother of a son named Jehoshua, Ben Nazaria. As a boy growing up, she entrusted him to the care of the rabbi Elhanan, for Jehoshua was well gifted with spirit and understanding, and the child progressed in knowledge. Rabbi Jehoshua ben Perakaya, of the same first name but no actual familial connection, continued the education of Jehoshua after Elhanan, and initiated him in the secret knowledge of the Kabbalah. When initiated, Jehoshua was said to be knowledgeable in the first degree, and called a one-year-old a babe or lamb, though now an adolescent at the age of thirteen. The secret mystical number of resurrection and Scorpio. But the King Danaeus, the second king of the Hasmonean dynasty, who ruled over an expanding kingdom of Judea in the hopes to create the first Israeli state from 103 to 76 BCE, having given orders to slay all the initiates of the first degree or one-year-old babes, Rabbi Perakaya fled to Alexandria in Egypt, taking the Nazarene boy with him. The reason for the orders given are due to an incident during the Feast of Tabernacles, which was a major factor leading up to the Judean Civil War. It is recorded that during the Jewish holiday Sukkot, King Alexander Janaeus, while officiating as a high priest, at the temple in Jerusalem, demonstrated his displeasure against the Pharisees, whom included the Nazarenes, by refusing to perform the water libation ceremony properly. Instead of pouring it on the altar, he poured it on his feet. The crowd responded with shock at his mockery and showed their displeasure by pelting him with yellow lemons used in their rituals. They made the situation worse by insulting him. They called him a descendant of a captive woman and unsuitable to hold office and to perform sacrifice. Outraged, 
he set out to kill 6,000 people. While in exile in Alexandria, Egypt, Jehoshua passed his early youth with the Quenobi, known as the home to the secret Pythagorean school and Egyptian roots of modern Freemasonry. Jehoshua and the rabbi were received in the house of a rich and learned lady, which is Egypt personified. The young Nazarene Jehoshua found her beautiful without a defect in her eyes and declared so to his master, Rabbi Perakiah. Upon learning this, his master became so angry that his pupil should find in the Mosaic land of bondage anything good that he cursed him and drove the young man from his presence. Then follow a series of adventures told in allegorical language and retold and represented in the first 33 cards of the tarot, during which time Jehoshua supplemented his knowledge of the Jewish Kabbalah with the additional acquisition of the secret wisdom of Egypt. Having been trained in the exoteric, meaning public, rites, symbols, and rituals of the Kabbalah since childhood, Jehoshua learned the esoteric, meaning secret, mysteries lying concealed in the Jewish Kabbalah after getting initiated in the Greek mysteries of Ophis at the Temple of Osiris as practiced by the Koinobi priesthood. The Greek Ophis is represented as the Egyptian Uraeus, which are the one and same caduceus staffs of Isis, Osiris, and Thoth, who united are this hieroglyphic, is translated into PTR, pronounced the Petra, called the Eye of Horus, and form the Egyptian Trinity. Ophis, or Uraeus, appears as two serpents standing erect on their own tails, with a lion's head crowned and radiating, and bearing on the point of each ray one of the celestial spheres, or the Hindu chakras, and the planetary counterparts within the human body. Jehoshua discovered this Egyptian trinity was also the Hindu Ida Pingala Sushumna Nadis, which were one and the same as the Abrahamic religion, where Judaism teaches of the Ada Nai, a retelling of the Ida, which is a Nadi or channel. The Ida Nai is the feminine negative moon channel of magnetism, which he discovered was the Jewish Ada Nai. This three headed serpent was the Greek Hydra. Egyptian Ophis, and the Ophite key to unlocking the seven celestial spheres, and the astronomical correspondences Ophiuchus, the snake handler, Ophis's counterpart in the heavens. The sun passes through this constellation on the days between November 30th through December 17th, and if your birthday falls in these dates, you are an Ophiuchian and are meant to sublimate or handle your inner serpent in this life, which Jehoshua discovered was a triple-headed serpent created of a dueling left and right, masculine and feminine. And the third serpent, which balances and harmonizes the dueling duality, the central channel is the pathway, Christ. Jehoshua discovered Christ is how to sublimate the other two dueling, Pingala and Adonais. And if you are in Ophiuchian, you are born to have this Christos sublimation over this dueling duality. When the persecution of King Alexander Janaeus ceased, Rabbi Perakiah and Jehoshua returned to Judea. All credible and non-religious commentators 
have agreed that a literal massacre of young children is nowhere mentioned in history, and that, moreover, an occurrence like that would have made such a bloody page in the Roman annals that the record of it would have been preserved for us by every author of the day since then. Herod himself was subject to the Roman law, and undoubtedly, he would have paid the penalty of such a monstrous crime with his own life. Such would be the judgment of the noble Roman Empire. We, our civilization so esteems in high regard, right? But on the other hand, we have not the slightest trace of this fabled massacre of literal one-year-old children under Herod in history. But of the one-year-old babe initiates, or lambs, of the mystery schools under King Janaeus, and the Jewish civil wars meant to form a Jewish state by slaying initiates of mystery schools? Most certainly. The real grievances against Jehoshua start in Egypt and are two in number. First, that he had discovered the great mysteries of the Osiris Temple, where the mysteries of the Greek Pythagorean schools were blended with the Egyptian mysteries of Osiris, by having been initiated in Koinobi, Egypt, and second, that he had profaned them by exposing them to the public, or the vulgar, or profaned, who misunderstood and disfigured them. This is what the texts say. There exists in the sanctuary of the living God a cubical stone on which are sculptured the holy characters. The gates of the temple were never lost sight of, and the door of the sanctuary opened but once a year to admit the Hierophant high priest alone. This stone is watched by two lions of gold, who roar as soon as it is approached. But Jehoshua, who had learned in Egypt the Greek secrets of the Ophite initiation, forged for himself invisible keys, and thus was able to penetrate the sanctuary unseen. Unable to displace the cubicle stone of the sanctuary, Jehoshua copied the characters on the cubicle stone and hid them in his thigh, after which, emerging from the temple, he went abroad and fabricated one of clay, which he showed to the Chaldean nations and passed it off for the true cubicle stone of Israel personified by Saturn in the heavens, upon whose pole is a six-sided hexagon, from which a 3D cube can be rendered, and is the Islamic black cube in Mecca, from which is derived the six-pointed star of David, the Buddhist spirals of peace, the Christian cross, and so on. And... Saturn was the head of the original pagan Jewish pantheon called Israel, because all Jews are Kabbalists, but not all Kabbalists are Jews, as we will see in the case especially of the Nazarene sect of Jehoshua ben Nazariah. The combination of the cubicle stone etched with the holy characters gives the explanations of the attributes and powers of the incommunicable name. And Jehoshua began astounding people with his miracles. The dead were raised at his command. The leprous and the insane were healed. Jehoshua wrote books concerning magic, which he delivered to John. He wrote a work called Magia Jesu Christi, which concerned itself with the serpent Ophiki of Osiris, connecting oneself to the stars and the heavens via the seven celestial spheres and their planetary counterparts, especially through the power of holy intonations using crystals and colors, the sacred divine arts. He forced the stones which lay buried for ages to rise to the surface until they formed a mountain with a cave enclosed from whose interior in the mountain top he preached 
his sermon in the mount, not on. Jehoshua said, upon this in the next occult secrets revealed, we will see how the secret Egyptian priesthood which initiated Jehoshua, the Koinobi, discovered the Egyptian key of office was a medical allegory for the spine, the movement of electrical and magnetic forces, and how, ultimately, this symbol, the Petra, which means to show, is the exact shape and representation of the inner claustrum of the brain, which houses the pineal gland, and how to open and activate this pineal gland in you. Think you are ready for the Ophite key to activate your seven celestial chakra spheres and pineal gland? Then book me for your personal natal crystal serpent astronomy report and gain access to the true secret Masonic knowledge born from the mouth of Thoth and used by the same Koinobi priesthood of Egypt who initiated Jehoshua ben Nazariah. Jesus Christ himself, to have your birth stars, location, time, and name read by me. This report will reveal your true secret 13 signs, your 13 keys to activate Metatron's cube in you. And when you know the power of 13 and Metatron, you hold all the secrets of the universe and the powers to manifest your desires. If you wish to possess your own Ophite key, activate your pineal gland, and tame the triple-headed serpent to become a master lion head amongst the lambs, book me now. Visit the shop in the link. Like any initiate, arm yourself with this cosmic knowledge and bind all your spiritual forces to you through a 108-bead mala that incorporates the mystical powers of the moon, the earth, and the sun, with encoded powers for chakra and kundalini cleansing. There are four stages of kundalini activation. 1. Purification or preparation for the upward climb. 2. The activation or kundalini arousal or awakening. 3. The rising the Kundalini's journey through the Nadis and Chakras. Lastly, four, integration, living in and as the light. The seven celestial spheres are also the seven churches in the letters in St. John's Revelations. Amala will satisfy the first step of your Kundalini journey of purification. Please subscribe, like, comment, and spread this word for us to become the dream come true of Jesus Christ by resurrecting this secret knowledge and with which we can take back this beautiful earth of ours and make it a true heaven on earth. Thank you for all your love, your help, and super thanks. If you have not already joined, Join the Occult Secrets Revealed Chakra Activation and Kundalini course for just $4.99 a month. Please do so now and feel the power of the true Christos rise in you. And until next time, trust and believe that it is okay to be you, the most beautiful you there ever was, there is, and that there ever will be because you are not a story that can be told twice, and there will never again be a stage for you to perform but this one, right here, right now. So be you, the most beautiful you.